In the previous video, we deployed two edge transport nodes. And in this video, I'd like to do a quick check just to validate that they are up and active and ready. And then secondly, leverage those edge nodes to provide some centralized DHCP services for our network. So at the moment, we now have this topology with these two ESXi hosts acting as host transport nodes. We just deployed edge one and also edge two. So those are ready to rock. And also previously, when we're talking about distributed routers, we set up a distributed router called tier one router that was connected to two segments, seg 10 and seg 20. And then on each of those, we had two VMs, A1 and B1. And over here on segment 20, we have A2 and B2. And those VMs are being supported by these respective hosts as shown right here. So let's take a moment and just verify that edge one and edge two are up and active and ready to go. Now there's a couple ways we can look at those. One is we could use the NSX manager and take a look at the edge nodes there. And secondly, we could SSH into each of those to take a look at them at the command line interface as well. In fact, let's do both of those right now. So here in the vSphere client, let's go to the top of the heap here to the vCenter, click on the VMs tab. Also, let me just for a moment, take care of this vCenter server health alarm. I'll reset that to green. Sometimes that happens when we first power on the vCenter, gets overwhelmed for a moment. So with that address, let's click on the VMs tab here and there is edge one and edge two. So they're up and running and let's also manage our columns. Let me add the host in there and that can show us where they're running. So these two VMs that we deploy, these edge nodes are running on ESXiC and that's at the IP address of dot 33 as shown right there. All right, so they're up and running. Let's go take a peek at those from the perspective of the NSX manager itself. So here at the NSX manager, if we click on system, up at the top, it's gonna to land us on the system overview and here it shows that we have two edge transport nodes. Fantastic, if we click on that, it'll take us to system and then under fabric, down to nodes right there. And here are those two edge nodes. One's at dot 36, it's management address. The other's at dot 37. And at the moment, there's no tunnels available yet. And that's very likely because we haven't called upon any services from these edge nodes yet that would require the use of their tunnel endpoints. However, they do have tunnel endpoint addresses as shown right here, 153 and 154. So that looks great. The other thing I'd like to do real quick is just go to the command line interface by SSHing over to these edge nodes to take a look from that perspective as well. So here is edge one and here is edge two. Fantastic, let's go back to edge one and we'll do a get gateway command and press enter. So we have this one UUID associated with VRF zero. So right here, if we did a get route and press enter, that's gonna show us the routing table from the perspective of the VM itself. So it has a default route with the next top of 192.168.1.1, and it's also directly connected to the 192.168.1 network. So that represents the management. And then if we wanted to go into this logical router right here, which is VRF zero, we simply type in VRF zero. Also up here, it indicates the type is tunnel. It's using the VRF zero for the transport network. So now that we're in VRF zero, if we did a get forwarding and pressed enter, here it's showing that it's directly connected to the 10.11.11 network, and it has an IP address ending in dot 153, and that's its tunnel interface. So if we type in exit, and then one more time, if we do a get gateway and press enter, at the moment, this edge node doesn't have any distributed routers or service routers or anything else other than its management IP address and also the information regarding the transport network and its tunnel endpoint address. And we'd have a similar result over at edge two. So one of the questions might be, okay, Keith, we deploy these edge nodes. So when are we ever going to use them? And the answer is if we're implementing a hierarchical implementation of routers with high availability, it's gonna call upon the services of these edge nodes for that. If we're using centralized DHCP services that are being provided by NSX, once again, that's gonna be provided by these edge nodes. If we want to connect, for example, to an external network and have routing capabilities between VMs on our internal networks here and external hosts that would also once again require the use of the edge nodes. And then anytime those edge nodes are called upon, if we need to send traffic to those edge nodes, we would do that from our tunnel interfaces here on the hosts. So effectively, we could have traffic going over the tunnels between our ESXi host and the edge nodes, or we could have traffic between the edge nodes going back and forth. And we could also have traffic going back and forth between our NSX host transport nodes as well. And for a full complement of possible tunnels, we could also tunnel directly from ESXi A over to edge two and also from edge one over to ESXi B. So those are all the possible paths for tunnels that could be created and then used on demand to forward traffic between any of those nodes 
when needed. And again, the control plane is our NSX management cluster down here that's educating all of these nodes, the host transport nodes and now the edge nodes regarding reachability and how to reach devices, including based on their MAC address and the routing table on this router. So let me go ahead and clean that up just a little bit and let's start taking advantage of these edge nodes. And one of the first things I'd love to do is use these edge nodes to implement DHCP services. Now, there are several different ways of setting up DHCP services in NSX. One of those ways is we can go ahead and we can enable DHCP services on this router, which involves creating a DHCP profile, associating that DHCP profile with this gateway, and then configuring each of the segments to use gateway-based DHCP services to dynamically assign addresses. So again, here and here. So as our first example of using some edge node services, let's set up DHCP. Also, prior to that, one of the components we're going to need to set up is that we're going to take these two edge nodes and we're going to specify that they both belong to an edge node cluster. And that way, when we call upon the services of the cluster, we have some potential fault tolerance because we have two edge nodes to call upon if we call upon the services of an edge node cluster. So for our very first step, before we get into the DHCP, let me walk you through how to create an edge node cluster using the NSX Manager. So here in the NSX Manager, we're going to click on System up at the top. Over on the left under Fabric, we'll click on Nodes. And then here, we have a sub-tab called Edge Clusters. So if we click on Edge Clusters, and then there aren't any by default, so we'll click on Add Edge Cluster, and then we'll go ahead and name it, and we'll call it Our Nested Edge Cluster. And then from the nodes we can choose from, I'll go ahead and choose these two, click on the arrow to bring them over, and click on Add. And now these two Edge nodes belong as members of this Edge Node Cluster. So if we click right here on this hyperlink for two, it'll show us exactly the two edge nodes that are participating as part of this cluster. So now that we have a cluster, let's go ahead and set up our centralized DHCP services. So the first thing we're gonna do to set up DHCP services is set up a DHCP profile. And that's done right here under the networking tab. And on the left, we're gonna scroll down under settings to networking profile. So over time, VMware has modified where certain elements are, for example, with 3.x and 4.0 and 4.1. So they may move the interface components around from time to time, but the basic concepts are pretty much the same. We're gonna create a DHCP profile that identifies we wanna use centralized DHCP services. So with network profile selected, up under networking profiles, we're gonna click on the sub tab here for DHCP. There are no DHCP profiles by default, but we'll fix that by clicking here on add DHCP profile. And I'm gonna call this our nested DHCP server. And for the profile type, we can use DHCP server or relay. I'm gonna set it up as a server. And then we'll go ahead and supply an IP address. Now, there is no red asterisk here, meaning we don't have to put it in a server IP address. And if we don't, it'll just pull an IP address it wants to use within the world of NSX to go ahead and use as a DHCP server. However, to make it really easy to identify whenever that address shows up, I'm gonna use 6.7.8.3 with a 29-bit mask, just like that. Again, you don't have to put an IP address there, but this is going to represent the logical IP address for our DHCP server inside the world of NSX. And then it's asking right here, which edge cluster would you like to use to provide those services? And from the dropdown, I'm gonna choose our nested edge cluster that we created just a moment ago and click on save. All right, so now we have this logical centralized DHCP server at this IP address 6.7.8.3. And then our next step would be to go ahead and train our gateway to go ahead and be able to provide services regarding this DHCP server. So currently if we went to the network topology section here, so under networking, network topology, here we have segment 10 and segment 20. There's our tier one router, also in the world of NSX referred to as a tier one gateway. And you'll notice if we hover here on service, the only service it has by default is the default gateway rules, which by default are also permitting all traffic. So now we have a distributed firewall rule, which is being implemented by our ESXi hosts. And we also have our gateway firewall rules, which are implemented at our gateways. And in both cases, by default, it's permitting all traffic. So if we wanna add DHCP services here, what we'll do is we'll go back to configuration for this tier one router. So we'll click right here on tier one gateways. And then for our tier one router, if we look at the details, currently for DHCP configuration, it's configured as not set. So we'll edit that by clicking on the three dots, clicking on edit. And then we'll specify here for DHCP config that we want to set the configuration. And then here we'll say, you know what? We want you to provide DHCP server functions. And we'll specify that profile that we created earlier, 
which is using a centralized IP address for this logical DHCP server at 6.7.8.3, and we'll click on Apply. And then we'll click on Save, and now that that's done, we'll go ahead and click on Close Editing, and let's go back to the network topology and compare and contrast. So now, back at Network Topology View, for the same gateway, if we hover here over Services, now there's also a DHCP server function capable from this logical gateway. So if we want to use the DHCP services here on segment 10 or segment 20, we would simply modify those specific segments and say, hey, we want to use the DHCP server functions provided by the gateway. So to do that, on the left, with networking still selected, we'll go down to Segments. And let's edit segment 10 first by clicking on the three dots, clicking on Edit, and then specifying for DHCP over here that we want to set the DHCP configuration. Then from here, we'll go ahead and specify that we want to use gateway-based DHCP services. And because the gateway is already configured to use that profile, all we need now to do is put in the ranges of IP addresses that we want to use on segment 10. So for example, if we want to use 10.10.0.151 through 10.10.0.200, we simply plug it in. So it'll hand out that range of addresses for devices on the segment. It'll use this IP address as the default gateway those devices should use. That is the IP address associated with our router on this logical segment. There's the default lease time. And then we'll also hand out a DNS server. I'll hand out a public DNS server, although at this moment, <laughs> we don't have connectivity from this segment 10 out to the public internet, but we'll fix that in an upcoming video. So we'll click on apply here and then scroll down, click on save, and then click on close editing. And then we'll repeat that process here for segment 20. So notice here under subnet, see how it's kind of blue now? First is gray. And that implies that we have DHCP services associated with that subnet. So let's go ahead and click on the three dots for segment 20. Click on edit. And on the right for segment 20, we'll click here on set DHCP config. Once again, we'll use our gateway DHCP services. And then we'll specify the range we want to use for the segment 20. Let's use 151 through 10.20.0.200. And then the default gateway is the IP address associated with the router, the gateway on the subnet. There's the default lease time. And let's use a DNS server of 8.8.8.8. And we'll click on apply. All right, then we'll click on save. And then we'll scroll down, click on close editing. And let's go back to our network topology for a moment. And you'll notice here now that we have these two services at the gateway level, which are the gateway firewall rules and DHCP. And also now down at each of the segments, we have a service of DHCP that's being provided by the gateway. So let's test it out. Let me see which VMs we have down here. So we've got B2 on segment 20. And over on segment 10, I've got a Mint Linux device and A1. Let's go ahead and power up A1 and B2, those two VMs. They are by default configured to be DHCP clients. And let's just verify they can pull an address from the 1010 range here and the 1020 range here, respectively. So back at the vSphere client, let's go to our Networking tab, let's go to segment 10. There's A1, we'll just right click and power that guy on. And also let's go to segment 20 with the VMs tab selected. There's B2, we'll right click and power that on as well. And let me also go ahead and bring up remote consoles for each of those. So here is B2, we'll open up a remote console and also we'll open up a remote console for A1 by clicking here on open remote console. And then we could go to the remote console and do an IF config or similar command to see what the IP address is there. Or check this out. We could also go back to the NSX manager right here under plan and troubleshoot. And with plan and troubleshoot selected, we could go over to traffic analysis right here for trace flow. We could click on get started. And then from here, we could select those VMs because they're now powered on and they should have IP addresses. There's A1. And sure enough, it got this IP address, 10.10.0.151. And on the right-hand side, let's go ahead and use VM and select B2. And it also got an IP address from that range that we just set up, which implies that DHCP is working. So right here, we could do a trace to verify connectivity between those two devices. And while that's cooking, we could also go ahead and just grab one of those VMs. Let me grab A1. And from here, let's do a ping over to 10.20.0.151, which is the IP address of B-2. We'll press enter. And that is working. And also our trace right here confirms there's connectivity there as well. So there's the flow of traffic from a1 over to B2. And if we look at the play-by-play -play here, it confirms the same thing. So it went logically through the distributed firewall. 
and that was on ESXiA, and then the traffic crossed over segment 10, and then it got logically processed by our tier one router, then logically sent through segment 20. So the routing was done all by ESXiA, and then it needed to send the traffic over to ESXiB, so it used the tunnel endpoints from ESXiA over to ESXiB to encapsulate and send that traffic over. ESXiB received that, continued processing it through the distributed firewall there on ESXiB before delivering it to the final destination here, B2. And also, if we went back to the command line for Edge 1, which previously only had VRF 0, which is being used for the transport network now, if we did a get gateway right here on the Edge node, it now has VRF 0, which is used for the transport network and the tunneling. It also has effectively an instance of our distributed router. So to see the details of that, if we typed in VRF 1, VRF is an acronym for Virtual Routing and Forwarding Instance, and think of it like separate rooms for different sets of routing tables. So here in the VRF for this distributed router, if we did a get forwarding and pressed enter, here is the routing table effectively for our little tier one router. So this tier one router has reachability for the 6.7.8 slash 29 bit network that we're using for DHCP services. It also has a route because of a directly connected interface on our segment 10, which is using 10.10.0. It also has a directly connected interface on the 10.20.0 network, and that's why it has that in its routing table. And here it's showing the full 32-bit address for that logical interface on the 10.10.0 network, and also here for the 10.20.0 network. So at this point in our journey, we have ESXiA and ESXiB and Edge 1 and Edge 2, all of which effectively have a copy or instance of this tier one gateway. So if any one of those nodes needed to make a routing decision based on the routing table, they have all that information regarding the directly connected networks and the IP addressing associated with those. It's also good to remember about these edge transport nodes and these host transport nodes, how they got that information regarding that distributed router. And the answer is the control plane and the management plane of the NSX manager provided all that information to those four transport nodes. Again, at the top, these are two edge transport nodes. And here we have two ESXi hosts acting as host transport nodes. And in our next video, I'd like to go ahead and kick it up yet another notch by using not just one logical gateway in NSX, but actually several. And I'll take you through that in the next video when you're ready. So I'll see you soon.